circus I've seen around here in quite a few years. Yeah, too bad they hadn't stopped in and spent the day with us here. I don't know why the Ivory thing always bypasses and gets down into well, right all these other through. towns. Leamington, Blenheim, yeah, Amherstburg, yeah. Windsor. What have we got, what have we got going on here? Did not you see the circus go through, boy? Yeah. yeah. Well, no. Uh, well, this is just showing that uh, it does pass through Kingsville. Oh, I see. They really don't do any more for us, so really. Well, we could sure get a good turnout, I think. Yeah, well, I think so. 90% of us don't do anything, only <laughs> loiter around town. <laughs> well, the reason I'm not working is raining. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing anything anyway, sir. Well, don't tell her, buddy. <laughs> I got a lot of plowing to do, so I can't be fussing around you fellas. <laughs> Hey, old lady. You want a circus to come to town, do you? Hey, a good idea. It would be. Hey, you don't think you got enough circus down here, eh? No. Nope. It's been a long time since I've seen a circus. All right. Yep. Maybe you can give me the address of the chap that's in charge of the arena fund there, and yeah, we'll I'd see what we can do for next year. Okay, good. Well, I'll drop you a line this winter and get in touch with them. Okay, nice to You're welcome, yeah. Alan. What I have is an old-fashioned tent circus. We call it Royal Brothers, and we'd like to come to your town for two shows, and the date is in May. It's May 28th, and I only have one date open, and uh, we show a day every week, so seven days a week, Monday to Sunday, we're putting on a show. And the way we work the circus is that we bring the circus to your town, and we do all the advertising and pay for the advertising, and what we ask you, a Lions Club or Kinsman Club, Rotary Club, or all the organizations we work for throughout the year, is to sell the tickets ahead of time. And this is how you make your money. Other than that, whether there's 200 people or 2,000 people. Right, we still we show. We have no guarantee that's your problem. That's right. So it's up to you guys to get out and sell some tickets. Now we have a very, very fine circus. It is the only Canadian circus that travels with a pen. There's 35 animals on the show. We have a lot of pretty girls, a lot of dogs and monkeys, ponies, two elephants, and a 2,800-pound hippopotamus. And uh, good luck on your ticket sales, and we'll look forward to see you, seeing you in May. sheared on the wheel and it came off. So now it's a 1952 trailer, so we're out at the junkyard trying to find 52 lugs, you know, for the damn thing. So it's a little hard. Did you find them? Yeah, finally, finally. How long do you think it'll take before you get on the road? Oh, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. Any damage done to the trailer? No, 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 just... Uh, what about your time It's inconvenience. Now we're really, uh, Everybody's waiting for breakfast. <laughs> no, they miss their sausage and eggs. What time is it now, then? Let's see, it's uh, going on to 11 o'clock, and we show at 2 o'clock, so we're going to have to really go. I sent them all over there. I told them the free show over there in just a few minutes. But I wouldn't open until about 10 minutes or two, okay? Are we keeping what time is it? It's 10 after 1. Hell, I don't care. We're not going to be late. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll make it. We've still got the seats to put in, but that's all right. We'll open up the midway, and they'll entertain themselves out there. And I'll give us an extra 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm taking a little bit of a break myself right John now. John is my partner in the circus, and his family is a traditional circus family. We've been in for about four generations. And uh, Corky is his brother. 
He introduces the acts in the show and also does the sideshow for us. They'll be all right. They'll get a hot meal tonight. Just go on. It's normal. Okay, well, why don't you go ahead and just tell them now, just with your lungs, you're going to have a little something doing. And don't lay the emphasis too much and we're going to be late because we won't be that late. Okay? See you later. They'll get thirstier and buy more Coke and clap louder, maybe. <laughs> Well, yeah, as you know, it's the concessions, the popcorn, the peanuts, the candy floss, the souvenirs, the balloons, the programs. That's the sale that we count on to make some money. Uh, without it, we couldn't survive. Uh, the cost of the tickets is just uh, to move the show. That just picks up the operational expense of uh, hauling up the tents and the elephants and all the equipment. Heck, and gasoline alone, we spend about $300 a day. So we can't make it off the ticket sale. Uh, the candy, the concession, that's our bread and butter. Here come the clowns! It's wash day at the circus. The real problem isn't putting on the show. That's just a sideline. Our real business is the logistics of transportation and uh, getting all the equipment over the road, putting out, tearing it down, um, getting the concession supplies and so forth. That's the part most of the audience don't see, and that's really the best part of the show. Well, this is our third season, and we travel on about 15 trucks, and we hit mostly the small towns, like in Ontario we showed Tecumseh, Petrolia, Blenheim, Elmer, towns of that size, and that's why they call us a high-grass circus. We play 120, 140 uh, towns each year, and uh, that's a town a day, and uh, that's pretty well it. Just put it up, take it down, catch some sleep, and drive to the next town, good Lord willing. Some local guy come and told us to get the hell off the property, that we had no business to be here. And my beef is that the Optimus Club has sold $1,900 worth of tickets, so somebody knows that we're here. And the guy told me to get my lawyer. I was going to need him. He was going to go down in town and call a cop. And I told him to go ahead and get the cop. I'd be glad to talk to him and the police, too. You have these headaches. It's some irate uh, crackpot. Uh, maybe he owned the property and sold it, and uh, the deal ain't gone through the other something. That's probably what it'll wind up to be. Because the, the Optimus Club surely wouldn't have given us this for our advertising, you know, this far ahead of time, and sold tickets for a performance, and, and not be sure about having this property to show on. But the Optimus Club ain't showed up except to check up their tickets. That's why I was a little perturbed. So, so a town, uh, they, when a town is that way, they, it's usually a start of City Hall. We've had one guy come from the City Hall. He says, where's your people's license? Well, hell, we don't buy the license. Our committee buys the license. When they, when they sign our contract, they obligate themselves to get license or waivers or permits for the show. And they, uh, somebody's contacted that City Hall from the Optimus Club. The Optimus are a bunch of jerks, you know. So the, the guy from the town hall, he goes, okay, uh, what do you want, some passes? Here's your passes. We'll give him the passes. And the guy from the health department, here's your passes, you know. And uh, so they left. Nice guys. They're coming to the show tonight. I'll be glad to have them. And then this little thing shows up. It just upsets you. You know the problems we have with the tent today. You know, we got green help and so forth. So I, if I wasn't tired, I probably wouldn't even bother me. But now I'm arguing with my old lady and the town folk and everybody. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. See you. Hey, now turn it around. Out there, it's easier. Just walk to your right, that's it. Underneath the rope. Now just swing right on back this way and bring your point first. Right through here, just duck a little bit. Okay, up we go. Now watch your head, neighbors. Bring it now. Let your end down, back up. Back it up. Okay, just one second. Go on with it. Go on with it. Now you big guys get on each end of it. Looks like a centipede. Now watch them little kids, you don't walk over them. Okay, let's back end Look, the benefit of you people who have not Come here, come here, come here, come here. Move it up, move it up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd like to take this time to introduce some of the performers to you. On my far right, David McDavid is our Scottish Highlander. Standing directly next to him is Sailor Doc Riggs. Sailor Doc Riggs is one of the only tattooed men left in the world. 
and he's tattooed in places that you didn't even think they could put tattoos. Come here. Go on. Come here. We have 8,000 pounds of elephants. Hi. Well, now, i got to get my trucks out. I'll move that piece of equipment. Make no mistake. What? Well, I am trying to take and get my circus on on a piece of property I made available by the Optimus Club. I realize that. I realize well, that. Well, then why are you blocking my equipment into the an area I can't get out of? I'm afraid. The kids are on that pipe over there. Well, hell, put your equipment up against the pipe, but don't block my trucks in. i got to get them in and out down there. Well, now, you're not going to move it? I don't really want to move it. Well, you're going to have to. I've got to get that equipment out of there. What, what happens if I need to get an ambulance or something in there? Then what happens? Do I send it to you? Say, hey, go downtown and get the Joey. Can't they get down through there with that big tree there, get through there with the their, with their trucks and stuff through there? If I can get out that way, I'll take it off that way. But I don't understand this. I've had three people from the city. I've had you and some nincom poop in a blue car come out here raising hell with me, calling me a goddamn fool, and so I'm sick of it. Well, I didn't know anything about this till about two weeks ago, honestly. I didn't know. I know well, isn't that enough advance notice to cancel us two weeks ago rather than today? Well, I, don't, I knew it about two weeks ago, and I said they could have the whole back area. Well, that's all we're using. Yeah, that's all I, that, well, all we're using is that is for an approach to yeah. get in and out okay, of that joint. Well, what, I, what I don't want, then, is anybody to park in here. We can't have any parking. I here. sent word up by my assistant manager. He must have talked to somebody up here that we would not uh, park cars in this area. To me. I, I down, told him I'm to block that gate. I was out in the field. Well, you like me. You work, huh? Yeah, I was in the field. Okay, I, put something across this thing here. But leave, and I'll put one of my men on that gate to keep right, the hell okay, out of there. But I, I agree on that. If I'll okay, tell him to take that thing there and park it across this yeah, gate. Okay. No, I'll, you got to get out tonight. So yeah, but I'll, I'll, okay, put it across that gate. Leave me one gate or the other. I'll, I'll watch the down, gate. Okay, if you watch the gate, long as nobody parks. I'll there. get a cop down here and ain't a son bitch gonna park out there. Okay. Okay. Agreement. Joey, Agreement. you're all right. Yeah, Thanks thank a million. You. Thank you. This show will be all out and all over before the main circuit starts, so you have plenty of time to go to the sideshow before the main circuit here to feed the guy. Now who wants peanuts? Peanuts here to feed the circus elephant. Now who wants peanuts? Quarter twenty-five cents. What's over? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Royal Brothers Circus Sideshow. And for our first presentation this evening, I would like to bring to you my good friend, Mr. David McWindy on the Scottish bagpipe. <laughs> Now, children and ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, I am now going to try to explain the modern tattooing system. Reaching in here, I'm going to show you a modern electric tattoo machine. The machine consists of a shaft with needles soldered upon it, driven back and forth by two little coils, operates much upon the order of a common ordinary electric bell. Now I have one point that I try to get across. Before you are tattooed, make sure you want the tattoo and you'll be happy with it. I'm completely tattooed. Here's there are some very nice pieces and some of these could be taken off in the fleshier parts. So I think I made my point. Before you get tattooed, you plan it and you'll be happy with it. Now this time I sell photographs of myself and I sell them for a quarter. And anyone would like to get a photograph of myself, I would be more than glad to wait upon you at this time. If not, I'm going to ask uh, Dennis to take over and entertain you with the next act. Thank you, Doc. This young man is a third generation fire eater. His father and his grandfather before him were fire eaters. Having learned the art in the Orient many, many years ago, he uses no chemicals in his mouth whatsoever. Those torches have been soaked in gasoline and they are hot. Please watch El Flamo. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, now, he's never, never seen a circus the year before last. He joined us as a working hand, and he had the moxie to stay with the thing, and he's uh, graduated to, with his first step up as a sideshow, you know, at Flamo. 
and then from there into the performer. And that's what he wants to be as a performer. Well, he's learning a little bit at a time. And I don't think he's learning as fast as he thought he would. Okay, it just takes, you know, a few more years, but, uh, but at least he's got the, he sticks with it, you know. And uh, he does pretty fair on the trampoline and with the far eating, and we're building him a tight wire rigging, which uh, I imagine you'll see that in action before you leave, really. The tight wire. But he's good. If you had six like him, well, it would take a lot of pressure off. It sort of tastes like Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Flamo, the human blowtorch. Now, boys and girls, it's my turn to try to entertain you with a few feats of prestidigitation. And that's a great big word for a little bit of magic. A lot of people can juggle three balls. And it's a simple pattern. You can see one ball just goes under the other. And it's the same thing with anything that you juggle in three. Except when you change up to what they call a fountain, like this. And you can do various things with the fountain. You can drop a lot. The kids all like that. And then this bit, you really look like you're getting with it, but you're not. And all in the world this is, is juggling two objects in one hand and one object in the other. It's simple. You go the inside and the outside. And here's something that not too many juggle, jugglers attempt because at this point, everything has left the hand. And so you got to concentrate on three things instead of just a couple. You see that? Everything leaves the hand. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Juggling Michaels! <laughs> And I'm not really a very good juggler. I think I am a good showman. It's the sizzle that sells and not the steak itself. It's how you present the act, you know, and how you do it. Yeah, do you know how long it took me to learn that? About 10 seconds, and I put it in the act. The guy said, I'm going to show you how to spin plates. And he gave me one of those, and I put it in the act that evening. <laughs> and there's nothing to it. Anybody could do it. But I think people like it. You know, they, they like that. I suppose there's a half dozen guys on the show can do the same act, you know. Whether they could sell it as well, I'm not, and I, I don't mean that as a brag, but that that is my my uh, specialty is how I can sell an act, take a mediocre act and sell it, and I think that's important. In other words, I'm not a I'm not a juggler's juggler. I'm not a technician, and I got into this business by choice, and I love it. You know. <laughs> oh. You got another one to serve over here? As you know, we pick up most of our working crew on the way. They're mostly young guys. They're trapped in these towns. They're fed up with the type of job they're doing. And uh, they want to see the countryside. They want to see the rest of Canada. So they join on with the circus. And of course, the first uh, good night of rain, they get their feet wet while they're, they're gone the next day. It's like the two guys we hired in Delhi while they're gone this morning. And uh, we don't know where they're gone. They just disappeared. A lot of the animals we uh, lease, uh, that elephant out there, Allie, we pay about $200 a week for her. That old hippo in the cage, about $90 a week. And uh, the performers, uh, sometimes they can be a pain, you know, they're sort of prima donnas of the show business. They're the, the ones that get all the applause, and uh, sometimes you have an argument with them and they quit, they just leave you flat. So you have to call an agent in Toronto or Montreal or Tampa, Florida, and get another act to come out on a plane and uh, go on from there. They drive you nuts, you know. It's uh, so that's the excitement, and that's what keeps you in the business. We've gone a lot of places where shows never have gone before, like Newfoundland and uh, you know a lot of the Quebec towns and northern Ontario. And the first tent circus ever went to Newfoundland was this one here. They uh, they never had a tent show there before. They had the circuses in the buildings, you know, but never a tent. We we find our best business in towns between 2,000 and 3,500, and uh, these are the towns that don't have a theater. They don't get much in the way of entertainment and. TV isn't hurting us like it used to. And the big cities are just too sophisticated for our type of entertainment. They, they don't care. And uh, we compete with everything, the taverns with all their entertainment, the bars and the, the hotels, the uh, cinemas and everything, that, all the restaurants. So most towns we play don't have a theater. And the amount of live entertainment they get is very minimal. Maybe they only get uh, one, two touring shows every five, ten years.
I don't know what makes one town a, a show town, you know, from another. If we knew that, we knew the secret. That's like getting the key to the midway, I guess, or, you know, knowing everything about the stock market. That's sort of, the, I guess, the enigma of the circus business. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, in the center ring, we proudly present the sensational Zenzani. <laughs> Are you a pressure digitator? Hello, Lord. Hey, Cardi! Got that got two ends tied up now. That's I, a, I think I think we could hire that. <laughs> I imagine the budget's about right anyways. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Send me the picture. Watch the flag. The flag will go down. The wind is blowing in an easterly direction now. Right. That flag the flag will go down. It'll be dead still, and then the wind will pick up and blow in a westerly direction. The wind will come from the west. And we'll get about 15 minutes about of rain. 15 minutes of rain. I talked to a fellow here for 42 years. He knows what he's talking about. He's a farmer. Then I'd be safe in getting my raincoat. That's why I got my raincoat. I figure 15 minutes in this thing. You want my umbrella? No. I'm not going to ruin my tux tonight, though, I'll tell you. 15 minute raincoat. You got to look good for Aunt Betty. By golly, the flag has stopped flying. Pretty soon now, it's going to start flying this way. When it gets real hot like this, and it gets real rainy like this, then I don't do any business because I sell candy apples and I sell souvenirs, and the hot weather and the rainy weather demolishes both businesses, unfortunately. So if it stays like this for about two weeks, I'll go bankrupt, unfortunately. Well, I'd hate to count them. Anytime the weather gets this way, I go bankrupt. It's a awful to have to start all over again at my age, about three or four times a year, at least. Here come the elephants! Big Ellie and Starlight. Come up here, move it up. Come here, come here, come here. Move it up, move it up. All right, come in line. Come in line, Ellie, come in line. All right, salute, salute. Study, study. All right, Ellie, move up. Ellie, move up. Come here. Starlight up. Hurry up, hurry up. Get up there. Get up there. Up, 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 up. Skip Ellie. Salute, Starlight. Study, study. All right, come in. Move up. Get over. Ellie, come here. Ellie, come here. Tub. Come in, Starlight. Come here. Ellie Tub, up. Move it up. Come here, Starlight. Move it up. Move it up. Move it up. Come here. Move it up. Come up here. Come up here. Turn, Ellie, turn. She dummied up on me. All right, feet. All right, change. Change. Steady. All right, change. Change. Ellie, Ellie. All right, trunks. Trunks. All right, feet. Stand. Up. Ellie, stand. Ellie, stand. Ellie, stand. Up. Up. Steady. Thank you, thank you. What's happening, John? Uh, it looks like we might have a storm brewing. But it always went. Uh, you know, you never can tell up here down in Texas. I'd be scared to death and have the tent down by now. And it can sure happen in a hurry. And they, uh, 
uh, all you can do to prepare for it is just tie off every rope you got and drive every stake and then hope for the best. As far as making them stakes hold any better, you know, that's, uh, they're in and that's that. And it, that's the worst thing in the world when they send the blow down. They very seldom anybody gets hurt, you know, because the, the canvas cushions the fall with the tent, the poles and that. But what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. I, I, I was running out of something to say when that little girl, he brought the little girl up. And I need to know what to say. Going, no, come on, John, John. Slosh. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Hold the bottle for a moment. Who's that? <laughs> Burf, you're a ham. <laughs> now, every clown in show business that I ever knew has generally their own makeup. They may be the same characters, but there are little idiosyncrasies, little things that you can do to your face that the makeup soon becomes almost a trademark. So as I said, the unwritten rule in this business is for you never to copy anybody else's makeup because it's very unprofessional and it usually doesn't do you any good anyway because the makeup that I'm gonna put on fits my face, but it won't fit anybody else's face. If you're going to lay down the floating to stand in line when they open the front door, if you have a lot of your friends and neighbors on the inside, they will be coming out and then we will be there. It's called guying out. It'll hold the it'll hold the tent to the ground. See, the tent's just like a great big kite. If the wind gets it right, it can pull it right out of the ground. With little children, it's strange how they will react. But if you look at them in surprise, they will be surprised. Or sadness, or happy. Came, chase them under that marquee, and you ain't gonna get them out of there for love nor money. And I guess I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm ruining a two hundred dollar tux. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna get the hell out of the rain right now. And the only way we can get the festivities started is if you come back out of there with me out here. It's not raining bad, that's just a California mist that came in. To the stew pot chicken. Now, boys and girls, I know that you knew that that old rubber chicken couldn't talk. I'll accept this guy here, but that's his problem. I want to show you something. See the little gadget I just took out of my mouth? That's called a Swiss warbler ventriloquist whistle. And this is the little gadget that magicians and ventriloquists have been using to fool all the boys and girls. A couple years ago, I made a trip to Japan. And while there, I made arrangements with the company to furnish me with a quantity of these whistles. If you'd like to have one, you can get one from me for what it cost us to have them manufactured and shipped here to Canada, 25 cents. This does conclude our Circus Sideshow presentation. We thank you one and all. If you want a whistle, step right up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Now, don't forget to read the instructions. Honey, I don't have change for a $2 bill. No, I'm, I'm sorry. All I've got is 75 cents in change. to the center ring once more, we present the Jumping Jacks, and here they come laughing and scratching. Hey! never forget, and they will never forget, your local Dominion store, your wonderful shopping center right downtown, has insisted that we try their quality products on Big Ellie. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Ellie doesn't have any teeth. She just has two big bones that she crushes all of that. There goes Ellie, eating her supper, thanks to Dominion. She'll finish it outside. And now we present Captain David Snyder, Captain David Noter, and his trained Palomino ponies. Cool. Keep it cool. Go ahead, Button. Tex, stay out there, Button. Come in. Come in. Come in, Tex. Take it easy, Buster. Come up, Finley. Finley, you're cruising for a bruising. Hey, Julie, come over here. Hurry up, Julie. Hey, Button, Button, Button. Come over in this ring. Hey, you're on the wrong side of her, Bill. Chase her over this way. Come in, come in. Come in here. Oh, come up, Julie. Get over it. Go ahead, Jumper, go ahead, Jumper. Cool it, you little bench-legged booger. Get in your place. Come on, get in your place. We goddamn plumbers. You better never leave it. You understand, huh, do you? Come on, ho! Okay, audience, applaud, you little boogers. <laughs> the funny clown! Come here, come here. 
gentlemen we have worked all the way up to the conclusion of our circus performance and you've been a fine audience you know if audiences were paid you'd be worth a million thank you each and every one of you please take your time coming down out of the seats and use the front way and the front way out only thank you each and every one of you It's wake-up time. Another beautiful day. Hey, Harold? Yeah. Guess what? What? Sun's up. Jim? Yeah. Are you awake? Yeah. Hello, John. It's easy, a beautiful morning. Good morning, people of Canada. This is one nice, beautiful morning. Burf? Yeah. Good God, what a face. Are you ready? It's time yeah. to do it. Where's Billy? And where's Burf? Burf is not here. Wake up. Greet the new day with a smile. Find out where Burf is. The That's a good idea. Hey, where is Burf? Huh? Where is Burf? I don't know. He took off. With everything? What do you mean, everything? I mean, is his baggage here? No. Oh, I guess Burf is gone. I thought you knew about that. No, I didn't know about that. What might have happened to Burf? He might have quit. Just like that? Yep. That's the way it happens sometimes. Oh, uh. Hey, Jimmy, can I get your recipe for your coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Put it on a boiler. <laughs> I said, Burf, say anything to you about blowing last night? No, he didn't. Well, they, uh, did Bruce leave? I don't think so. He's usually in the cabin 74. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, cab of 74. Which one's that? Oh, you mean the white, the white truck? truck? Okay, here we go. Pay him enough to keep him Smart stiff, job, but not enough it. to blow. Huh? Hey, Barney. Yeah. Are you awake? Where's Steve? All of his stuff gone? Oh, oh. No, no, he's gonna blow. Let's take him in. Okay, who's up there, Jim? Hey, Jim. Yeah. Is Steve gone? Must be Johnny. All this stuff is. Really oh, this stuff is. Oh, God damn it! He's on the manifest. Well, that's great. Okay, well, it's wake up time. How, How many have left? left, John? What? How many men gone? Oh, it's two so far. <laughs> and you lost six of them the last 24 hours. <laughs> six. Right. Six. Six. Yep. Yeah, I've lost like six guys in the last 24 hours. You're doing something wrong. Burf, Bruce, and I mean, they all owe me big bills. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you going to do tonight? Probably to do an awful lot of working. <laughs> That's one thing that they always forget. No matter who leaves this goddamn thing, the show will go on. I don't know why. How's the bookkeeping there, Jimmy? She left me. On me, money. How much? First one was about $20. The other one was about 10 Just turn into the office. Nothing I can do. Hey, Ellie. What is this? Go ahead. <laughs> All right. That's enough. You want some coffee? She's ready to go. She's had her coffee in the morning, she's ready to go. Pardon me? Had her coffee in the morning and ready to go. Now she's going after Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> morning. 
the news right. this morning, Al. Looks like rain this morning. <laughs> Doesn't look too good, does it? Long jump, 70 miles. What, news, what was your news yeah. this morning? What did you hear? I didn't hear anything this morning so far. I just got up. <laughs> Why, something happened? No? Yep. Yeah? I heard that burp's gone. Burp's gone? Are you kidding? One oh, or two fun. others. One or two others. We're going to be short three or four people for a few days. Who's going to do the flame trick? I don't know. <laughs> can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> John can eat fire. Burp will be back. He won't be gone for too long. How long I'm do you sure. think he'll be gone? Uh, two or three days. He'll be back. He can't do anything else. What else is he going to do? <laughs> Go back to work in a postery factory? I don't yeah. think so. No, he'll be back. Get out of there. Get out. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave, Leave it alone now. Right outside of Ancaster, Ontario, uh, brakes failed on the hippo truck and it hit a farmer on a tractor and uh, knocked the farmer into the ditch. Luckily, he was okay, but his tractor was completely demolished. Well, trailer brakes, like they didn't have the valves on, but if with the valves on, They're they still right, leak. Not, oh, they still leak. Yeah. So we want that looked after. Okay, and the tractor needs brakes, right? The tractor, yeah, both uh, brakes. Okay. Okay. A little more. A little more. Well, we appreciate all your help. Sorry for your inconvenience. I didn't ruin your coffee break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to run over. Okay, thanks again. Okay. We sure appreciate it. We'll be in there later on today. Okay, so. that's fine. How are you today? Good. How's things in Miami? Sunny. You know, it's sunny up here. It's been good and cold at nights and warm in the daytime. So yeah, but I imagine it's a lot hotter down there. Good. You got any snakes? Yes. 14 foot cobra. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what I want. If you got it, I want a, something like a 10 or 14 foot Burmese python. Uh -huh. uh, I, I don't have that much money to spend. Uh, something around $200, $250. Well, I need it uh, for the summer. I need it as fast as you know possible. I'd like you to put on a plane so it'll be either into Toronto or London. London's the closest airport where we're showing today and tomorrow. But uh, what do you got for a pit show? You got anything that's unusual? Like uh, we we have any, any three-toed sloth? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chase. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. We work seven days a week, and we get up at seven, but often won't get to bed till about two o'clock in the morning. It doesn't really bother me any, neither do the other guys, because we travel. A lot of guys will sleep between town to town. It's all kind of all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I learned. What have you learned? To go to school and learn your education, not to do this. So you got your education. Why so would you like to work in the candy shop? I get to eat all the candy, and if I work with the elephants, I can ride on them. Yeah, but that way you don't make no money if you eat all the candy. <laughs> Do you? Who wants to make, to make money? At least you get fed. It's not bad. You get your meals free, a place to sleep, travel. It's all right. So how we do last night, Hazel? $567 on the advance and three seventy gross on the box office. So the rain killed us. <laughs> you could say that, yeah. Could <laughs> have finished that off. Well, the, the record rain, knock us off for? About $35, I think it was. That was actually cheap. You know, he was out there about an hour and a half. That's a total of two sixty nine forty four. Yep. Quit spending all this money, Al. We're not going to make the payroll. Well, this week's been a little down. Uh-huh. That's my bankroll, right? 
Now you're ready for your next trick. Stand up. One. You can do each trick three times. Now lean down and lift your legs off. There you go. Okay, now you're ready to do the foot loop. Hook your leg over the bar. Put your foot up in the loop. Lean back. Put your hand down on that second rung and push, push out. Now do your honest shakats. Lean out and point your toes and smile. Well, the main reason we, we sit up so high, some people, they, you know, they're always asking us because they have to reach up for the change. Well, in the old days, that was the idea. You used to push the change out to them and they couldn't reach their change. Or they used to put a little mat on the ground and cover it with dirt and they'd push their change and then fall down in the sand. And of course, at night after everybody was gone, you'd shake the mat out and there was all the change. As years went on, you found out that the honest way was the best way. So nowadays, there's not too much of that. But that was the idea of the high counter, you know, that they'd put their change and the people would reach up trying to get it, you know. Of course, they'd always leave some because they couldn't pick it all up, you know. And uh, but our counter here is high, too. But, uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm, you sure can. Did you dress up specially for the circus tonight? No. You didn't? No. <laughs> That's a pity. Thank you. Is your boyfriend is in there? No. There's lots of boys in there. You'll do all right. Would you like a change, please? Oh, yeah. Don't forget that. But uh, I think it's mainly nowadays so you don't catch uh, colds and anything else for all these people. Where's the main entrance? That the, that's the main entrance right there, ma'am. Yes? OK, uh, Billy, I certainly appreciate you uh, coming up and volunteering to do the fire eating and sideshow since uh, Burf has left us. Why, it leaves us without a uh, fire eater. I don't know where he is or why he left us, but uh, nevertheless, we do need a fire eater, and you're going to be it. And I appreciate very much you volunteering to do it. There's a few basic things that you should know to keep from getting hurt, because fire eating is not that hard. It's something that mystifies the public, because normally people don't put fire in their mouth. But it's not that hard. OK. Now, all you do is pinch it and bring it right over here immediately, see, and light that torch. See how easy that one goes out because it's smaller? You can do that anywhere on your body. Just touch it. You won't have much hair left on your hand. But you can always light the torch. You can light it from your tongue also. This way. Yes, ma'am. Little one. To you. There you go. Two adults, two children. All right, 750, please, sir. I just reach over there and grab it like I did and touch that torch. Just touch it. There, see how you blow it out now. Blow that torch out. Okay, now do it again. Right back over, real fast. Okay, there, now blow it out again. Are you burning your fingers? No. Oh, okay, now the torch is out. Now we'll try the tongue. What you want to do, here, I'm going to burn my shirt, boy. Tip your head back and stick your tongue out. And trust me. Okay, are you ready? We got wind coming. See? Just like that. Did it hurt? No. Okay, now you try it. Now don't touch the wire, touch the gas. Now watch your flame now. Right in here, get coordinated. Don't do it slow, do it fast. Go right in there and that's it. Now you got it. All right, always blow that torch out. Keep that torch blood. You're not going to put this one in your mouth, you don't care how long it burns. But that torch you want out. Now, Again, the action. Watch the action that I do to get that torch in my mouth and close it out. Right around it. Don't be afraid of it. The minute you put it in, don't breathe in. Just put your mouth right around it. It'll go out. OK, you want to try it? Try it. Take your time. Put it out. Put your lips right down in there fast and uh, think about what you're doing. As long as you're thinking, you ain't going to get hurt. I'll guarantee it. Are you ready? Don't breathe in. Remember, don't breathe in. Don't do that. You got white makeup on and you get black mm -hmm. soot on it. But you know what you're doing now? <sighs> now you need to get some gasoline and practice. Well, Alrighty. Twelve one child, five seventy five. What are you paying, are you? Alrighty. Five seventy five. It's about time he took you out, isn't it? Say it's about time he right now the only thing I'm interested in you doing is with the fingers 
to light the torches, you can light it from your toe, you can light it from a lot of things and cool the girls off. Or you can uh, put it in your mouth and close it out. That's all we need because we need the torches on the ballet platform. That's primary. The torches attract attention. You notice how the crowd stops when they go out there? When they're coming out on the blow off, we can stop a crowd with those torches. And that's what we want them for. So you practice, you've done it once now, all you gotta do is practice a little bit. You're a fire eater. You replace El Flamo, the great. You're the new El Flamo. The next young man I'm about to introduce to you is known the world over as Flamo, the human torch. He's a third generation fire eater. His father and his grandfather were fire eaters before him, having learned the art in the Orient many, many years ago. He uses no chemicals in his mouth whatsoever. Those torches have been soaked in gasoline and they are hot. Please give your undivided attention to El Flamo. to try to entertain you with a few feet suppressed to digitation. I would like to ask your cooperation during the next act to remain in your seats at all times. High above rings number one and rings number three, we present the Royal Brothers Circus Aerial Ballet featuring Miss Virginia and Miss Antoinette! gentlemen we have worked all the way up to the conclusion of our circus performance and you've been a fine audience you know if audiences were paid you'd be worth a million thank you each and every one of you what acts have you done over the years over the years i'm a head bouncer that's where the ball spot come from <laughs> head bouncing trapeze did a high act out on the road but all the shows in the country well, the Ringer Show from on down, the Hagenbeck Wallace Show for 17 years before they sold my act. <laughs> you think I'm bullshitting you, but I'm not. That's just the truth. I can't do anything else. That's all I know. The only thing I own is I own a lot. I own a lot in the Showman Cemetery in Hugo, Oklahoma. A little six by six. It belongs to me <laughs> in the cemetery there. And that's it. Now I'm about finished right now. <laughs> I'm about, about to finish it. I have to. I mean, what the heck? You can only go so long. That's all there is to it. Harry Rooks was right. You only go so long. He died three months after the show closed. The canvas truck finally gave out in Marathon, Ontario. And the elephant truck broke in half. We managed to fix it. Uh, Burf the fire eater 
never returned, and we heard later he had joined the army. Our hippo, God love him, he died in Roster in Saskatchewan, and uh, we had to dig a big hole at the end of the field and have a bulldozer push him in, and that was the end of him. And despite all the storms, the wrecks, the people leaving, all these misfortunes, we had the best year ever. And uh, we've dried our socks out, and we're going to take a shot at it next year. <laughs>